good evening and welcome everyone i am sitash and i'm delighted to welcome you all at kolkata center for creativity talk series artist to entrepreneur uh, with today's speaker artist and independent curator and the co-founder of kochi bnla foundation the organization behind initiation of the india's first bnla the kochi mukhidis bnla mr bose krishnamachari at live session artist entrepreneur top 9 kolkata center for creativity those who don't know or coming for this uh, talk for the first time i would just say is a multidisciplinary interactive art center located in kolkata that is working for inclusivity capacity building and well being for artists and different communities in society through presentation promotion appreciation and application of different art disciplines in cultural landscape of contemporary india since its inception in november 2018 our artist to entrepreneur talk we started as a response of the time eagerly with sincerity in the time of covid-19 pandemic the field of art that has been run by public participation patronage and grants have already been seeing scarcity of resources and we feel that it is the time that arts artists social communities and different organization come together and discuss uh, to find out entrepreneurial possibilities and look into the methodologies of the masters to see how we can together uh, get through this uh, rough time and still create art and develop a uh, economy for artists and all the allied possibilities Today we have with us artist and independent curator Mr. Bosh Krishnamachari whose diverse artistic and curatorial practice includes drawing painting sculpture design installation and uh, architecture he is the co-founder of the Kochi Biennale Foundation the organization uh, who uh, creates and organizes Kolkata's for, uh, India's first biennale the Kochi Mukherjee Biennale uh, since uh, 2012 uh he has served as the president of biennale and the director of the foundation till date overseeing the four successful edition of the biennale so far he curated uh of an image faster than light first edition of yan chuang biennale at moca yan chuang china which showed the work of 73 artists from 33 different countries in the museum of contemporary art yen chuang he is a board member of international biennale association and an academic board member of the tao xian uh, chinese arts and science project in conversation with mr krishna manchari we have uh, the director of kolkata center for creativity ms rina divan she has been spearheading many projects in kcc to promote research and development of different disciplines of art that leads to a volumetric and qualitative impact not only in the art field but also in the society especially for the young artists and performers rina champions the uh, and facilitates the inclusion diversity and gender equality in museums and art spaces she is pioneering social changes creating an inclusive culture in kcc and addresses different abilities and choices gender and sexual diversities and marginalized communities through appreciation and application of art i would request reena ma'am to please take over the conversation from here thank you so much titas today is a very special day and i think more than me nobody is excited because this is something i have a master in front of me i'm going to be greedy so please pardon me if i ask more than i had promised you both public school background to international art world your journey is both inspiring and surprising from artist to art collector curator founder of art gallery and founder of a bnl both i'm sure that when you are in front you don't mind you know that the opposite side will be very greedy so here i am uh, instead of asking you about the binale first which i had promised you i want to talk to you a bit about the gallery and the artist before we move to our real conversation what is bmb there was a there is a gallery or there was a gallery in mumbai can you just tell a bit about that yes 
Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Rina, Divan, and uh, KCC for inviting me to be part of this uh, ongoing series, Artists and Entrepreneurs. I, yeah, talking about gallery in Bombay, it's called BMB. Nobody knew what to do us, you know, like a BMB, you know, it was, uh, in 2008 or seven, uh, my friend, artist friend, Dia Mehta, and Heather, her mother um, asked me to, you know, join their venture. You know, they, they had a space, uh, furniture, one side furniture and uh, half part, quarter part of it was a gallery space in Mumbai. And it was really center part of Mumbai, in Fort, uh, Fort Mumbai. And then um, it's that building has culture in some ways that, you know, uh, there's a Kemal Prescott is situated on the third floor of that building and the ground floor was uh, gallery BMB. And request of my friend, uh, I thought, uh, I suggested to them, if it is the end please, if, if you could give it, I would make it as a kind of gallery and uh, also make it as a kind of design the space. And designed by it was designed by Nuru Karim, and also I suggested to them that it will take when you start a gallery, it will take time to even break even. You know, you you have to invest first, and uh, then you have to wait for the fruits to come, <laughs> maybe years to. Uh, and uh, it, I was uh, my idea was when I was discussing with them, my idea was it was almost like a European football or now it is IPL, you know, by the best players in the art world, in the sense of best artists from around the world, and bring them and show their work along with the contemporary Indian artists and younger generation as well as, uh, um, you know, I was looking at uh, Indian art in that sense, you know. So, um, and also I have done... Uh, you know, it was only existed for two and a half years or something like that. Um, and uh, the gallery is called BMB. And uh, it was uh, two other partners of mine was uh, Devanshi Mehta, Mehta's M, and Yash Birla and Avanti Birla's B. And Bose's B, you know, it was, it was, nobody knew that, you know, we never said that, you know, it's like uh, Bose, Mehta or, and Birla. So it was uh, my other two partners. I had to leave that place. Uh, it was one of the finest, that period of time. Of course, we had, you know, in, in the 2008, uh, those period of time, economic fall off and, you know, like in the national art world, you know, everybody was closing down their gallery. You know, we used to have a fantastic gallery called, um, it's a chain of galleries called uh, Bodhi, and which was closed down in 2008. And uh, 2009, I was curating the same time, I was curating India Pavilion in Arco, Madrid. And, you know, I, it was an art fair, but every, uh, every year they invite a country to be part of it and India was the guest country and I curated uh, 16 galleries from India and I was not curated, I was not curating artists, I was curating galleries and I said and uh, it was fantastic to be in that time of, uh, you know, it was almost like uh, still all our gallery people done extremely well in during in 2009. So BMB is, you know, like in that period of also, I was working on different projects as well. And 2010, uh, the idea originated, you know, like when Mr. M.A. Baby, then culture and education minister of uh, Kerala visited Mumbai at my home. Uh, and then the extended discussion with my colleague, artist friends like Riyas and uh, uh, Jodi Basu, and that's the moment the, the idea originated because uh, Mr. Baby asked us what's the best thing can be done for, you know, after many, many thoughts, he asked this question, you know, it was a late evening. Um, oh, yeah, so we suggested after many thoughts, a binale can be done, you know, and so a binale, that, that suggestion 
originated in Mumbai in 2010, May 30th. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> since then... So actually, from the gallery, the, uh, the Benale originated. But before, again, moving to that, uh, you've been on both sides as an artist as well as, as a gallerist. So we see that kind of a struggle that artists um, every day negotiate with. And, and there are many artists in, in the talk today who are listening to us. So for their benefit, I would like to ask you, uh, as an artist, how should one approach a gallery or a curator? What are the maybe 10 steps to be a successful artist? Yeah, it is quite, uh, it's a really an important question, especially for younger generation of artists when they are practicing, whether it is younger or older, you know, I have been seeing, I've been seeing older generation also doesn't know how to approach uh, a gallery, you know, in some of the artists uh, career, they have succeeded when they are, you know, internationally, when we look at artists like uh, Louis Bourgeois or Maria Lassing, all these people, when they are, you know, 70s or 80s, they, when they become 80, 80 year old, <laughs> Uh, people started recognizing their practice and, you know, like uh, got into amazing art practices. But what what is important for an artist is keep on working, keep on working and keep on seeing and uh, reading. You know, that daily practices of art making is really important. And the same time conversations with uh, contemporary artists, contemporary artists, I I was I would like to say about myself, and I used to spend a lot of time with uh, uh, my senior artists from Mumbai. You know, like uh, spent time, very good time with uh, Agba Padamsi, Lakshman Sreshta, uh, Prabhaga Kulti. You name anybody in Mumbai, I used to spend time with them, and also sp spend a lot of time with the young generation of musicians and uh, theatre people. Uh, filmmakers, architects, uh, artists like Sudarshan Shetty. And Sudarshan, when I sit with uh, or live with, we stayed together for many months and years. Um, so um, we really, um, you know, we talk about uh, art, we talk about music, you know, or some of our musician friends come and play or something like that. So that get together, a lot of, lot of get together used to happen at home or in, in friend's place or opening spaces, you know. And also, interestingly, I was studying in the period of, you know, got out of college in 90s, beginning of 90s. 90s played an important role historically in India. In one, one way, it was the uh, history. You know, the, the liberalization happened in the 90s beginning. And uh, when we look at music, MTV, um, you know, brought to there, you know, like that's the kind of youth really got into music and we channel later. So this period was uh, incredible. And 89, I remember, 1989 at uh, Chhatrapati Shivaji a terminus, you know, it was called the Victoria Terminus, had an amazing show uh, of 125th year of uh, Times of India. And uh, that exhibition, Vivan Sundaran's work, or, you know, like uh, uh, radical uh, groups, one of the artists, Alex Matthew, and then it's in a public space. That's the first time I'm seeing a public uh, space, uh, a temporary exhibition installed in Mumbai. And uh, millions of people see that uh, public space in Victoria Terminus. Um, so coming back to your question, you know, it is important that, you know, have conversations with your contemporary artists, as well as, you know, go out. If you are an artist, you should try to learn other, other art forms as well. That hybrid nature is an important aspect in creative. And, you know, like you need to know how to write proposals in contemporary time, you know, artists, if you really want to see a um, uh, curator, if you have a good portfolio, you make a good portfolio and put together what is your thoughts about this, you know, the content needs to be right and the concept behind artworks and, um, uh, you know, put it together properly and, you know, uh, uh, try to sh uh, keep, Ready. I won't suggest that, you know, keep it in the website or 
something like that. But it is always important to uh, keep archive. You know, whatever you, even you do a small sketch, you should keep it as a kind of archive. Take a photograph. Earlier days, it was slides. You know, like when I was studying, and I didn't have much funds to take for you know slides or whatever. And I used to tell my colleagues or my younger uh, friends, artist friends, used to tell them, uh, "Please archive your stuff." You know, but when I look back my career. I haven't archived anything by myself. That's a failure of, uh, you know, th those moments are only through oral memory it remains. Uh, you know, I never written about it, uh, but it is these kind of conversations can, you know, I can bring back uh, those moments. So I have incredible, uh, uh, you know, relationship with uh, uh, great artists, uh, living artists, and, you know, like uh, the, the stories and that is, you know, a lot of anecdotes with these people given me so much of confidence. I give lectures for, you know, students basically, you know, with the images of uh, art and, you know, different kinds of practices in architecture, design, fashion, photography, all this kind of subject, which I'm very much fond of. Um, and I, I usually tell them that, you know, this, this I'm giving you information. Here also, I'm just giving you information. I'm not giving you, I'm not sharing knowledge. Uh, the knowledge you're building or share, you know, building it from your information is important. And I, I remember an anecdote, for example, an anecdote. And I was asking my young students, um, around 20, 25 of them, just ask them, you know, give me 10 names of Indian contemporary arts. It was in 1992. And unfortunately, none of this, maybe they are scared to say it, share it or they didn't know about it. So I think, you know, it is important to know who is who in contemporary music, who is who, uh, you know, listening to the music as well. It is important, not just knowing about, uh, you know, the names, you know, dropping names doesn't help. I think it is important to uh, explore by yourself that, you know, what is happening in our city. And for me, Mumbai is almost like many universities, universities, many universities, as individuals as universities, city as universities, you know, like if I go to a gallery space, um, I had a really good times uh, chatting or watching or listening to a lot of gallery people like uh, Shirin Gandhi to, you know, um, Gita Mehra to many, many other gallery people. And I used to spend a lot of time uh, listening to them, or sometimes I don't talk, I watch and I trouble them, like Dadi Papandol and all, all these people I used to trouble and, you know, go with, um, yeah. So I think it is important to travel and see. There is nobody stops, you know. I would like to take another, uh, remember, I remember Agba Patansi was saying once, you know, I, was, I took some students, friends of mine, and introduced Agba Padamsi at his Juhu home. He had two houses. One home was in one studio, later studio was in Juhu. And then, uh, then uh, during the conversation, he said, um, why don't you come for the opening tomorrow uh, to uh, so-and-so place in, you know. So I said, uh, sir, we don't have the invitation. Mm. So he said, art doesn't need in invitations. You know, that was a really an important aspect, an important point, you know. So I think, you know, you should, that white Cuban thing, you know, we are all scared of going to, you know, private spaces, private gallery spaces. I think, you know, art doesn't need invitation. So take it up like that. And then I, I can go on talking about, you know, how to propose, you know, like I think, you know, education institution also try to include in their curriculum that, you know, these kind of things, how to write proposal, how to connect with the curator, and you need to know who is who the curators, you know. Nowadays, unfortunately, I see each and everybody is turning out to be a curator. It's not, you know, like there is, there is so much of history behind it. It's not just that you put in together some artwork, you can't be a curator. Or, you know, like you can't be a director of a gallery, you know. You, you need to have history as a kind of backbone, you know, like that. That from, if you have art history, that it's great but plus other, other histories as well, political, social, political, uh, all these kind of day-to-day -day things you need to be aware of it. Uh, 
you know, I think, you know, uh, as Angie Warhol said, uh, uh, a good artist, you know, a good artist is, uh, you know, great artist is a, or a best businessman is the best artist, you know. I think when he said something like that, a popular pop artist, when he said something like that, he was very much aware of the time. He was very much aware of the economy. He was very much aware of what is popular imagery, making, all these kind of things. So these kind of, uh, I think, all these, uh, it, they don't make statements. It's all originate, you know, it happens to you. If you really have the process of looking at things, process of meeting people, having the conversations, through conversations, you learn things. I was a Malu boy. I'm a Malu boy and uh, a Keralite who doesn't, I didn't know how to speak in English. You know, this is all through, you know, I, I also given up theater. I was used to do theater, given up my, all this career. Just, uh, I felt that it is, you know, uh, it's an important aspect when you said that, you know, born in a, uh, you know, a public, you know, studied in a public school to reaching in this position is actually, uh, I think it is my commitment. Before that commitment, it's my passion to do what I love to do it. And uh, continuously, you know, the, there was an, in, there's always, there is an enthusiasm. As you said, I, I'm greedy to know about things. That greed is important, but not obsessed with it. You know, I'm no, never obsessed with anything like that. Uh, but there was an enthusiasm to take me to all kinds of directions, all kinds of big people I met through that. I learned so much from, and I owe so much to Mumbai City and, uh, you know, so, so many friends, you know, like artist friends, Shatul, to I can go on, you know, hundreds of names. Like that. So lovely. It's, it's really nice. And uh, I'll just remind the people who are watching that in case you miss any part because of internet problem or something like that, this conversation is right now live on our Facebook and will stay there. So you can go back, relook at it, re-listen the conversation. So we will move uh, now to our next step that since you were both at the side of the gallery and the Binale, so I would first ask you that what are the fundamental differences between curating galleries and creating a Binale? I, you know, um, gallery is uh, galleries for exhibition, you know, but the binales are for uh, you know, building public, creating public. Um, also, the galleries, you know, got different kinds of perspective and also vision. It depends on the director of the gallery, you know, like some of the galleries are really generous. Some of the galleries are commercially driven. Of course, it is important, you know, when you talk about art galleries, it's mostly, um, uh, you know, I'm not against the word co commercial. You know, it is important to have a place for artist works to show. And uh, a Binali play as almost like a kind of cutting edge practices and also the curator. It depends on the curator also, you know, like how, and, uh, and the vision of the organization, vision of the, a biennial foundation or, you know, uh, organization who is running the biennial. So, uh, Benali's works never, you know, we don't sell artworks in the biennial, but in the galleries, you can have, you know, art show and as well as you can sell the work. And also, it depends on gallery's perspective as well, you know, the, the, uh, how galleries run. Different galleries got different perspective, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's it. Yeah, and in a way, I think uh, Benali is also more liberating because you can really address multiple art forms in a more uh, concise and, you know, structured way in a, in a Benali because everything can come together. Like, you know, what you were talking about, even for an artist to engage with other, other art forms. I think the whole idea behind Shanti Niketan of Rabindranath Thakur was that only, to bring uh, everything together, all art forms together. So when Ram Kinkar Bej would work, he would also work not only as a sculpturist or a painter, but also as a theater designer, a dress right. designer. That is what I think made him uh, what he is, what he was. Uh, so we'll move on to the next question, which is of course something that really hit me when I uh, visited the Benali for the first time. 
how have you achieved to make kochi uh, binale as the people's binale with so much of ownership by local Ali, people you know just wanted to i have uh, sent the 4 minutes video would you like to show that yes now here And here we will you know then yeah. after that you know i think yeah. i don't need to talk after that you know <laughs> <laughs> extraordinary and intense experience the anale that doesn't feel like it um, has a relationship to a museum in the other same way as other bienales do it feels very rooted in its uh, architectural vernacular context What I find and what impresses on me is the relationship between the place and the community and the artists and how this Biennale has impacted the area commercially as well as culturally and artistically. it's particularly wonderful that the focus is both local regional and international it makes it a very special biennale huge social uh Uh, agenda as well as an artistic one i think it's very important because it's a risk it's an economic risk and it's a, a social and aesthetic risk so but we have to encourage that because we want creative citizens not passive ones സാമ്പത്തിക വികാസ പുരോഗതിയിലും കൊച്ചിയുടെ സാംസ്കാരികമായിട്ടുള്ള മുന്നേറ്റത്തിനും ഒരുപാട് സംഭാവനകൾ നൽകുന്ന സാംസ്കാരിക ഉത്സവമായി ബിനാലെ മാറുകയാണ് As far as art scene is concerned, I think Kochi Mercedes Biennale is the finest example of what we have produced in the last decade. I don't think there is any comparable event, both in terms of content as well as in terms of the way in which it is organized. so i i don't know now i need to talk about it you know like uh, but um can you repeat your questions again <laughs> sure sure i will um how have you achieved to make the binale as people's binale with so much of ownership by local community and how does this binale works for the local economy for the local population oh uh, this the critical element is the curiosity and interest of uh, people themselves people come to the binale not with the familiarity 
with the contemporary art, but with the political and cultural awareness. We have to be able to rep respect that and create conditions where this kind of curiosity can be developed. So when you notice that uh, the program, you know, like the cultural program within, within part of this curated um, uh, biennial, there are many verticals are also uh, given strength to this uh, biennial. Uh, students Benali, for example, it's, it's one of the most important, uh, uh, you know, festivals uh, part of this uh, Benali is um, uh, part of it, and uh, ABC Art by Children is another uh, vertical. Then uh, we have a curator film screening and cultural program. Uh, this is all uh, because of, I think, building naturally, organically on the ground, you know, understanding the cultural diversity of that land. It's almost uh, that land, uh, when I look at it, it's uh, almost 44 different kind of community lives in this 4.5 square kilometer area. And uh, people uh, around 13 to 16 different kind of languages people speak um, mm -hmm. in this uh, small location. And that mm -hmm. location is already prepared from the memory of Musiris. Musiris is almost like a mother. And the Musiris was vanished in 1341, and the new port originated, new site originated, that is uh, Kochi, Fort Kochi. So Fort Kochi and Matanjeri, this, this area, uh, we, it's already a prepared land, um, sociologically, and the human condition. And uh, when we look at it, the heritage, the human heritage, to the heritage site itself, the architectural site itself, given mm. the strength to, to you know, um, a receptive land. You know, when I look at it, it is a kind of receiving end. Always this land become almost like uh, all kinds of cultures being received by the city, you know, absorbed by the city. So develop, you know, there we need to only, um, you know, just, uh, just throw some seeds. It will grow by itself, you know, that kind of space, you know. But, you know, people were not really, as I was mentioning about it, the people were not aware of this word called binale or biennale. It is an Italian word every two years. It, binale means every two years. Biennale means every two years. It takes place. And this festival, people, uh, of course, it was started 120 years ago in Venice onwards. There is about 320 uh, biennales around the world. Some of them could not sustain uh, remain, mm. you know, it's not easy to set it up by nail. It is not easy to set it up, uh, or run this, uh, you know, uh, consistency or, you know, running this by nail is a kind of real uh, Herculean task for many, many people, you know, many people support, many people collaboration, a kind of uh, a community built by that, you know. So um, that enthusiasm you need to create for. Mm. Uh, for the whichever site you are looking at for a festival, I think you need to create some kind of magic. You know, people should not be people should be surprised by each moment every day. A surprise yeah. should be there. The programming should be something like that. You know, you give surprises, uh, and then um, you know uh, there should be some kind of mystery um, uh, when we working towards uh, tomorrow. Uh, mm. You live in this present moment. That's the kind of situation we provide to people. It is an open mm. space. There is no white cubian space. Uh, we could erase that uh, white cubian borders and mm. the walls and mm. uh, open up to the public. You know, so that uh, public public participation means it is it is national, international, as well as other other friends and, you know, the testimonies is, uh, said by other friends. Uh, so, yeah, I can go on talking about the penale for a while. From, from here only, I'll take the next question, which is, you spoke about the students' penale. So I understand there is a sort of a residency also that uh, works over there. So yeah. tell me, how, how should one plan a residency? Because it is very important element for artistic uh, growth and artistic development. 
So how yeah. does one um, do you want me to show one slide from my my yes. selection? Uh, yes. So this art world consists of these many many phases, many steps, or many. Um, so one is, you know, you were talking about art residencies. Mm -hmm. For me, this this image of uh, Kala Bhavana is. Uh, uh, almost like a residency place. I think I would suggest to all my students, friends, to look at when you are studying in a university. Think that if that is your you know, that is your residency. Mm. Uh, it's in a larger sense. I mean it. You know, really, you you live in that place. You work in that place. You know, if the freedom allows, you know, twenty four hours in your institution, that's the best residency can. You know, the university gives that 24 hours of access to their libraries, to their studios, or foundries, and things like that. There you can create magic. You know, Shantini Kedin set it up almost like a kind of home. So create homes in the, you know, residency, you know, means a home. You know, create homes where you invite guests and master guests or, you know, student guests. You know, those, those kind of things. There are really interesting residencies around the world. I, I, I was part of some of the finest residencies. One was in, you know, received an award in 1996. Uh, this was also, you know, you put together your proposal and, you know, it was, there was only one, one award in, from USIS. So it was, it's like, you know, you, you believe in your work and you got your, this award to travel around uh, US, you know, I was in Washington, Chicago, Atlanta, Santa Fe, LA, San Francisco, and New York. So it's no, and my idea is, you know, when you received a, receive an award uh, or a residency, and the late, the last part was a residency for 45 days in Sausalito, and that's in San, San Francisco, closer to, uh, you know, um, so it's a beautiful place, and, you know, and it's a place called Headland Center for Visual Arts. So every day we used to, I, people, artists from around the world, Mexican artists, uh, and you know, from uh, artists from different parts of the world was part of that residency. So a lot of interesting conversation if you wish to have it. And also artists in those period, I've seen some artists used to work with the scientists and you know, like amazing to watch people you know, just some artist works with uh, materials, smaller, you know, like collages. Uh, incredible, interesting projects, you know, you could have, you could see, share the beliefs and the culture where they come from. So the residency can conceptualize in such a way that uh, it can be for all kinds of uh, creative people. You know, some of the residencies, the writers' residencies are there, curators' residencies are there. You know, also artist residency, musicians residency. I think you know it is. It should be a kind of amalgamation of all kinds of creative industry should come together. That's a place. I think institution should be that liberal. But yeah. I still, when I use this word, I would I would like to be really. Uh, I would like to be a little bit cautious because I've been seeing a lot of students coming out of liberal school and very much confused. I think you know it is lack of lack of deleting, lack of deleting in the sense of their philosophy, their ideas, uh, to be, they never had the chance of uh, channelizing it. And also they are, I found them, most of them are, unfortunately, um, you know, they, their skill was quite, uh, quite poor. And they are also very much aware they are, they are not, they don't have that skill uh, development uh, sessions much in those kind of institutions. It is important, as I said in the beginning, uh, that uh, daily practices makes you uh, gives you so much of confidence that you know you can do any kind of stuff. You know, not only really painting or sculpting, but you know, like reading all kinds of things. I believe the residencies can be. Uh, there is another amazing residency in London. Um, uh, Aaron Zito, not Aaron Zito, Aaron Caesar. Uh, I've forgotten his name. Anyway, he um, is amazing residency. Got it's not a huge place, but you know he conceptualized you know food 
you know, he invites collectors uh, as a kind of residency people and, you know, have conversations with them and uh, organize get together. I think, you know, we should have more, more and more cafes, more and more uh, clubs, more and more uh, get together places, you know, under the tree also, you know, the Tagorean idea was under the tree, you sit together and chat about, you know, art or that, that moments are important and the residency can, you can look at different, different models. Yeah. Lovely. Um, now that a bit of uh, word collector has come in, I would bring in uh, a little bit question away from the Binale because one of the people in the audience also has asked and I also wanted to ask myself. This question is from Anuradha Gupta. She's saying that uh, what about young art lovers who are interested in, and by the way, I think you're talking of Delphina Foundation. They do something yeah, for yeah. collectors, yeah, right? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, like it's a small place, but uh, you know, must check it out. It's in the center of uh, London. And yeah. I was, you know, it's, you know, that programming of that place made that place uh, important internationally, you know, programming of that place. So, Wherever you have, you know, any institutions, uh, any project, I think the program sections needs to be your, your really a backbone or something like that. Yeah. Right. So we'll take Anuradha's question. She is yeah. asking, what about young art lovers who are interested in art appreciation? Where would you suggest they start from and build a private collection? What is the definition of good art and how does one identify it? Um, can you read it again <laughs> if you don't mind? Basically, she is saying that how one starts developing a collection and how uh, to identify good art from not good yeah, art, but yeah, 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 there is nothing called I not understand. good art. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, like there, there can be a lot of contradictions. You know, like when I when I when I talk about uh, Joseph Boyce, he said everybody is an artist. Everyone can be an artist. You know, I believe that everyone could be an artist. Um, the best way to learn about artists, um, you know, I think uh, it's, as it's a kind of continuation of that process of looking around, reading about, you know, it is always interesting to read biographies, you know, and interviews by um, artists, artists and interviews. And also live with artists. That's the best way to learn, you know. Living with artists or work with an artist, uh, artist studio, um, that gives you much more ideas. Uh, that's also important that who, who is who you are meeting, whose studio you spend time with, you know. I think it is important that experience the people, studios, you should. I was lucky, as I was mentioning, I was uh, talking to, uh, you know, Dr. Giv Patel or, you know, uh, or I was talking to uh, artists like uh, uh, Meli Gobai or someone like that, sit with them for hours or not just listening to them, uh, given me so much, you know. So these kind of things, you know, and also you can take an internship in uh, studio spaces, you know, if the, you know, Adul Dodia got fantastic studio spaces, Sudarshan got, and Rias Komo got larger spaces, uh, TV Sandosh in Mumbai, and Subodh and Bharti got uh, lovely places in Delhi, and, you know, so studio spaces is one of the interesting places you can have a lot of conversation, understand, and you can get to know about many stories, you know, an artist studio is, uh, you, you meet, uh, interesting people coming over. Uh, there will be collectors, there will be, and not, may not be, get a chance to meet or talk to everybody, but you know, there are, there are so many, so many people will be having, visiting, you know, I remember some fantastic collectors visiting my studio, spending a lot of time, even if they don't collect work, that is fine, but spending time, you know, uh, one of my gallery friend, uh, Shalini Swane, she used to bring, collectors and, you know, sit, they just sit and chat, you know, so it's amazing and to have that, you know, their point of view as well as ours, but it is also developed by ourselves, you know, it's nobody can teach aesthetics and things like that. There is no good and bad is actually created by, you know, a curator's job is actually in some ways, when you curate, you need to delete so many things, a good editor of a magazine or a newspaper, 
they are why did we call the editors they <laughs> they know how to delete so this is important in art making as well you know you will be having hundreds of ideas but how do you channelize your ideas it is only difference between a madman and an artist is that you know artist knows how to channelize a madman get into trouble because he is not with one reason he never get into trouble with multiple reasons multiple problems somebody goes into schizophrenia or you know those kind of situation so i think you know channelizing your perception channelizing for that reason you need to delete uh, as much as possible i will always tell my friends that you know it's always in you know easy to make a surrealistic painting or a narrative painting than making an abstract work you know so there is a kind of so many you know like there so many learning goes behind each and every every schools of thinking that schools you need to know what are the kind of schools of uh, aesthetics are there movements are there uh, so the collection is i i collect started collecting it, it is very intuitive because you every day almost every day you see some um studios or gallery spaces or i work on my spaces you know whatever i collected it's collected from my i sold my work from that i used to collect i never born as a kind of rich boy or you know rich guy so I, it's all the wealth comes through uh, you know uh, so it's a kind of uh, jumping or you know stepping to another another level it comes from the roots that roots you need to have uh, really strong you know i fortunately my roots were fantastic you know because i i was sociologically or politically conscious economically aware of the situation because i was born in kerala i was uh, you know well educated people and surrounded with them you know but at the same time they're all from village but i could see there is kind of uh, uh aesthetics also originated from that land you know like there is kind of contrast or you know polarities of that uh, that extremities coexist in that land you know like amazing performative works i can see it in theyam the same day the same time you know somebody is wearing a munda a white lungi or veshti it's very minimal like a gandhi you know so i could relate to these kind of things and also politically conscious that's where i think it given that strength to read my society in mumbai so uh, if if my roots were strong from kerala the the branches definitely because of uh, the the mumbai landscape the mumbai universities as i mentioned earlier individual as universities city as universities yeah So there's no answer to it i think you know this yeah. i given you many chances to you know like you must visit galleries must mm-hmm. have conversations with uh, you, there are consultants you know if you really wanted to buy artwork art consultants are there you know in in the, you know many people worked with uh, auction houses auction houses also can give some kind of ideas and you know there are uh, you know i can name like uh, you know anupamata uh, to there is um, um malika sagar and then many other people you know like uh, safna you can look at look up all those kind of institution and they could definitely help you and uh, a, a good gallery and sustained gallery is always a better place for more if you are investing in art it is better to talk to a gallerist than you know um, you know don't take a hasty decisions you know if you're really collecting it for yourself as a kind of passion i i would say that you know i i when i collect or whenever i collected i if i don't understand also it is fine but there is an intuition this is incredible this i i didn't do it you know or you know like i really wanted to make this art but you know somebody else is done there is a kind of jealousy factor so i i like to have that kind of uh, you know that kind of thing so there is no answer to it but uh, these kinds of uh, yeah yeah so basically both artists and uh, art collectors needs to hang out in um, gallery spaces and have conversations and as much as uh, 
artists need the collector the collectors also need artists to you know uh, connect with and have conversation and understand the uh, whole uh, art scene and not just uh, one art piece right uh, so from art collectors to donors in what is it looks like like you know uh, for of course for the binale you need donors and you need the patrons so tell us a bit about ways of pitching a festival or a binale project to potential collaborators or donors or patrons how does that work oh it's a, <laughs> it's a this big is an question. important <laughs> question important question and um, yes um, you know like uh, if i talk about international uh, partnership building the first one for kochi musis binali was come from munich um, bmw invested in um, kochi binal the idea is uh, dr uh, uh, thomas gers is another incredible mind you know you know you should also take advice from him <laughs> is an amazing mind uh, he he understood the potential of the binet and uh, and we never realized this binale become kind of talking point for other binals or other institutions this is a model found by many many people how you bring uh, people to site people to locations like a binale festival sites uh many people are observing learning from us or also we learn from other institutions like istanbul binale the the residency program you know our friend come from istanbul binale spent time here our uh, our students uh, sorry our uh, office guys also gone to other binales to study and work there you know for example liverpool binale we have sent uh, uh, this uh, local boy fahad he is not an artist you know he, um, so these kind of things are also happen and uh, when it comes to patronage um, there is its patronage is actually philanthropy and philanthropy is generosity <laughs> i don't know how to mean and uh, that that uh, there are people very few people who are really generous and uh, vision to contribute or vision to contribute to a cultural project people always look for where is my face coming you know like oh, where is my company's logo appearing that's what look at it it happens for ipl but for a site like a binale we um, it's a kind of silently you are contributing and you know, there are so many uh, fantastic names like kiran we uh, uh, they have contributed huge amount uh, for the binale and asha jadeja from uh, you know silicon valley she put together you know one year for uh, technology so these uh, I, i i have to you know there are hundreds of names i'm sorry that i can't say everything now but the, the relationship building with them also they they believe that in this project you know like it's of course there are you know you need to work towards that kind of uh, Mm-hmm. that's true and it's it's like never ending project it keeps on going and each year it continues yeah. to grow i'm sure it's it's something that you can take a entire session only on this so i'll yeah. take two questions from audience because we you just now spoke about the education part so there is one question from shwetal patel and he is asking that what is your vision for art education in india art education in india it's a it's a it's a <laughs> i've been thinking you know as i mentioned in between every institution sh- should be like a, a kind of residency um mm. and uh, you know we we need to make a cultural policy the state as well as the, our country should make a cultural policy mm. and invest in culture invest in culture that is the wealth um you know i would like to give you an example when i travel around the world uh, unesco brought out a list of uh, creative cities which are the creative cities why they are creative cities and you know like why it is so important the culture become the most talking point or the 
the point to you know like the destinations like barcelona you know it's art art mm. and architecture play an important role art, art and design play an important role as well as sciences mm. these three things uh, all institutions should adopt art design and sciences you know these three things of course it is all connected when i say okay. i'm not you know there is theater as i was mentioning earlier all okay. kinds of creative industry should be in one location and okay. they should not be a kind of a painter should know about uh, poetry a poetry poet should know that that kind of things were uh, earlier days there were lot lot you know like it still it is happening in some places you know like there are small my home was in adda you know i never called as a kind of uh, you know name to my my place as something but uh, a lot of artists used to come you know like a camp organized fantasy programs in bombay so the, uh, there is uh, there is a small place uh, my artists young friends they have corner there is a residency place so institutions the educational institutions uh, needs to um, as i mentioned earlier liberal is fine but you know i think you know that uh, the it should be a kind of workshop kind of laboratory kind of institutions you know you mm. should create more and more and people should be very much aware of uh, design uh, as well as uh, science you know um, mm. all elements you yeah. know thank you um again young artist is of course you are very passionate about so i'll just take a small question because it might help some of the young artists who are listening to us uh, how can young artists participate in a biennale there are two biennales uh, one is uh, students biennale you know and uh, the kochi uh, muses biennale for us you know there are as i mentioned there are 320 biennales so you uh, create you keep on working and you know put together a wonderful portfolio and send it to the foundation info at kochi muslis dot uh, kochi muslis benali dot org and you know usually it is been it, we don't have an open call but we have an open call for students benali which will we will announce it very soon in couple of days time we will announce it for students benali Uh, but the main biennial is curated by the curator you know the picked up by an art an art curator so this is also that selection process is also important for us it is not the foundation decided uh, you know for example shubhiki is curating the fifth edition of the biennial uh, we appointed about 8 to 10 people eight people last uh, you know shubhiki's case and we only suggested them that you know the curator Uh, we wish to have uh, you know she or he should be as an artist as mm-hmm. curator and the second thing is that you know if it is an indian 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 artist that will be well and good and should be he happen to be an indian artist and but lives and works at singaporean indian artist mm-hmm. uh, and the curator decide you know like uh, she in a uh, fifth edition she is the boss you know like she makes the decision the previous edition anita dubey decided who who is who is going to be part of the you know that they bring out the vision and through the vision they take the another step and we connect with the international institutions and uh, anita's case she traveled to 30 or some uh, 31 uh, countries or 33 countries participants were there um, in present the fifth edition of the biennial um shubhiki traveled to 35 countries just before the pandemic opened i mean like gone into uh, in the march march 15th or something was her last destination was uh, um, benal sydney so the kind of uh, that travel research so there are institutions are also uh we take advice from institutions we take advice from other binalis we take advice from friends around the world uh, who studios should be visiting so the curator we just give them a lot of portfolios you know the final decision is the curatorial team uh, some fantastic people like uh, mario disuso from goa and you know aditi um, from delhi with, with uh, shubhiki 
working towards the, the the curatorial team is these three people but we have many other people in the office you know like the production and things like that so the decision final decision is made by the curator so put together great pro proposals with images and videos you know short videos longer whatever you know like you you pour it whatever you want to and then and then your friends should suggest you know like one by one it will happen you know you cannot predict your life you know but you know keep on working is most important thing mm. thank you superb so uh, we are almost uh, covered our time so i have another question from my list but before that i'll just talk to the audience that some of the question that you have asked like uh, the the funding process and sponsorship etc have been answered in case you have missed please go to the uh, fb page and listen from there and some question i can see are very personal to you can process. write to me you can yes. write to me right. if it is like you know kochi info at kochi musris binale dot org or bos krish at kochi musris binale dot org but always may not be i would be attending but you know please try you know many times you know sometimes i i like to you know attend every call i like to talk to all young people and not only young people i have lots of supporters from artist supporters you know patrons all of them i need to chat with and they are all been hugely supportive so that that's why i could you know sustain the binale could sustain because of you people so i always uh, look forward you know when kcc Uh, Richa is one of of them. You know, there are so many uh, people from Bangalore and other places. You know, all around the world, I would say. <laughs> okay, so um, this is another part which, of course, you are brilliant at. I have personally witnessed that. So my question is, how did how did uh, design the promotional part plans for the first Binale when you started, when it was yet to achieve its reputation? and it was relatively new as a concept itself yeah. in india so how did you plan the promotional part for the binale so we you know our board has uh, great members from different fields you know mm. um, someone is from um, um hotel industries somebody is from uh, business uh, uh, someone is from uh, educational uh, you know like uh and uh, design world um you know sunil v from the design world uh, sunil runs this motherland uh, a subculture magazine as well as he started his company and but he he is the man behind uh, incredible india incredible incredible india campaign in, in long time ago and uh, so such minds we have it and although aesthetically as artists we 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 always look for aesthetics and where and when and what sites all these kind of what kind of typography uh, what kind of design all these things are important when you marketing your portfolio or marketing your design uh i think these involvement of our trustees involvement of uh, outside world for example you were talking about shwetal patel i learned so much from him you know it's when he was 19 or 20 years old i met him in london so then immediately we be, i met him at uh, ica institute of contemporary art in london and then i invited him to goldsmiths college and you know we used to hang around that hanging around was uh, fantastic met uh, i spent a lot of time with the talvin singh uh, music listening to music at fabric these kind of things are important i think uh, meeting people sharing what you know and it's like some moments you pick up and uh, uh, i think um, yeah that's i don't know what um, so we were talking about the promotional plan so let yeah, uh, because plans. yeah like so um, how do you promote something so then design part is an important aspect and you know like and uh, and when we thought of uh, building up the biennial we created small brochures you know of what is a binale why we are doing it in malayalam as well as in english uh, 
and uh, which are the best biennials around the world. You know, these small two, three things, we given it to a lot of auto rickshaw guys, uh, theater people also played. And some of our uh, young people went around and given talks in art institutions or, and uh, local colleges and schools with slide presentation, what is art. They were not talking about Binali, but you know, like a theater people, theater sketches, they have done it, you know, like went into some of the 10 of our uh, theater friends went into, you know, small villages and uh, given, uh, you know, performances, uh, theater sketches, and these, these kind of things, you know, slowly, slowly the bloggers also started, you know, we invited bloggers to come and see the fight. So people didn't know, uh, we were, they thought it is a painting exhibition, why we are spending so much of time, and uh, sorry, so much of money, and you know, like compared to, this is also an important aspect, you know, like people think that when you talk about Binali, it is not a painting exhibition site. Uh, so they realized the scale of it, they realized the, you know, possibilities, then immediately things changed because of the um, because of the bloggers, because of this, uh, that is local, lot of local um, press, and there were a lot of controversy as well, you know, like uh, uh, corruption charges and all those kind of things, you know. So, which was also helped in some ways <laughs> to, uh, pro, you know, uh, we were um, we were quite. Uh, uh, so the learning comes from these kind of things, you know, um, how how you can adapt how you can bring audience so that was that's the way we designed uh, it is our binali it is my binali that kind of uh, slowly we developed that you know the previous editions in not the first edition we mentioned something like that but you know slowly we built it up you know sunil was an important figure in that you know conceptualizing the typography to the even this, our small uh, shops also uh, conceptualized the by you know, people like that, you know. So, there's so many aspects into it, you know, when it comes to designing um, a, a program or structuring a, a festival, uh, these things. Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, that conversations from one person suggest something and, you know, that uh, we'll mark it up and, you know, finally make a decision. That, you know. uh, still, there are failures and, you know, like the success also, you know, we we like to learn from each edition. So that's how it is from the, for example, the, uh, you know, your question was something else, but I'd like to say that, you know, we invented or we have, you know, initiated the, um, uh, initiated uh, um, Students Biennale in 2014 and then uh, ABC Art by Children. I wish, uh, you know, we, um, recently we made into the art by children kind of family webinar kind of thing uh, children with their parents you know attend this webinar internationally you know i i have i was there in the first uh, session so i could see somebody from the family from germany and family from local areas and participated and you know these are the kind of every step uh, the students binale was uh, Initially, 15 young curators got a chance, and the second edition had 15 other young curators. And the fourth edition, third edition, we thought, let's bring experts and you know artists. We brought experts. So each edition, we are thinking differently. This edition, uh, students Binal is going to be virtual, and we will uh, definitely, uh, you know, in two days' time, we'll announce the open call, and you know things like that. So. Um, I I can go on the design part of it, but you know, not in one one line. I cannot say that. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for sharing. But as I said, I'm really. Uh, I said my last question, but now is my last question, really last question. So, um, since you spoke about the government being a very uh, your first uh, patron, so uh, what are the pros and cons of having government advocacy in creating art? creating uh, art festivals, how it is or it was with Kochi Binale. Yeah, what are the pros and cons of having government advocacy in creating art festivals? Mm. A great question. 
and uh, how was it while creating something as big as Kochi Banner? As formal representatives of the people, the support of the government is important. Uh, the state is the institution with the most resources and I think creating conditions for the development of art and cultural projects is a major responsibility of the state. Unfortunately in India, as I mentioned earlier, we don't see enough of this uh, and uh, whatever support there is for traditional or uh, nationalist art, nationalist art. Um, we are fortunate that the government in Kerala understood the project as an artist initiative and have always respected the independence of the organization. So never had, uh, never had uh, somebody coming up and saying that, you know, uh, we never lost our creative freedom because they are, you know, so that, that we have that our autonomy, uh, the foundation got our autonomy to create the Binali. As I mentioned, this, uh, the cur curator is the big boss of the, you know, curatorial part but the foundation with our trustees, you know, uh, we build it with, uh, and I always say that, you know, like it's even last edition, you know, like uh, uh, there was pandemic, you know, like Nipah virus after that, there was, uh, uh, there was a heavy flood and, you know, Kerala was in a disaster um, time. That's the time art came up as a kind of uh, Kochi Muslims Binale given some kind of confidence to, especially to the local public. And, you know, it's actually given some kind of uh, curing or, you know, kind of spirit given back to the society. Also, uh, Safran art, you know, like with the help of artists, Safran art uh, brought up, you know, we, we could raise some um, very good funds, which, which, which we are given to the state government uh, for, CM's uh, chief minister's disaster fund. So these artists always, uh, it's a kind of help uh, that they are the biggest philanthropists, I would say, <laughs> uh, with the other, definitely everybody's important, you know, but uh, uh, the state and uh, my, our patrons build up, you know, we are also trying to raise funds through. So, yeah, I don't know, I have, that autonomy is important and, you know, also believe in culture, investing in culture, and we should study reports from internationally how culture can bring wealth, economy to the country, economy to the city, economy to the state. Each state should build some museums and cultural centers. Kerala is building 14 um, districts, they are building 14 cultural centers, you know, with the five... Um, I mean, it's not a huge amount like, you know, Bihar put 517 crore to build their uh, Maki designed museum, a Bihar Museum. But here it is uh, 50 crore in 14 um, districts. It's a great idea. So I think, you know, we have what 640 districts in India. I think uh, the country should invest in culture, in not in one culture for 3000 crore. I think, you know, we should uh, divide that into 29 states, look at equally every state and not a kind of parochial way, I think, uh, uh, or nationalistic way. We are, we, you know, the 19th, you know, I would like to say this with that, I would like to end that, you know, in the 1940s, the nationalism is not the present nationalism, uh, religion um, driven, nationalism is dangerous for our nation and that is understood i think you know many of our uh, we are all insecure in some ways i think culture can bring great wealth so invest in culture you know economy is there through culture thank you thank you thank you so much both it was really really uh, not only inspiring but a lot of knowledge uh, coming from your personal experience, which you shared with such an open heart, which, of course, I think that is the foremost reason people fall in love with you. The moment you, the, the moment they meet you is that because you're such such an honest person, open-hearted, you love to share. And thank you so much for being so generous tonight. And these conversations will uh, not, will never end. And I hope that we get more and more chance to 
have conversations in person and the world become a better place again where we can meet with each other without mask soon so thank you so much and i uh, give the mic back to titas the boss <laughs> i am in kerala now after 7 months 7 days quarantine this was uh, you know like first day i went out met um, uh, you know tourism minister finance minister and the chief minister's office so it's kind of uh, you know after 7 months 7 days you know <laughs> here in kerala <laughs> yeah good thank you you know it's not Usually, all my all my webinars were happening from my home. This is another home now. <laughs> yeah, that is. Thank you, KCC, and Rina, and Chitas. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Dina, ma'am, for this wonderful conversation. Honestly, uh, young artists. Uh, from any field i'm not saying they have to be visual artist anyone who's having remotely a thought of managing themselves from our generation and younger to us we would be eternally grateful for the conversation you ha- we have today and also for the final statement that you said sir i think that inclusivity that is every day threatened and as pioneers such as you should come and say and already what you said it makes really a big difference for a lot of us who are kind of uh, feeling threatened by the darkness that is around uh, so saying that i would say that uh, it it was such a big conversation we really need to think everything in so there is not much to say the festive season is coming in to kolkata everybody stay safe and please don't go for so much pandal hopping <laughs> yeah please don't <laughs> and we'll come back with the last uh, uh, of the season of uh, artist entrepreneurship with uh, jehan manik show in november 26 at the same time and we'll mo- talk about uh, how to develop an art training institution in performing arts uh, field so that's for that and today good night stay safe thank you sir thank you ma'am mm-hmm.